Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What I would like to say right now is that there is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Amen. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. Amen. A sweet spirit in this place. And I can tell by the expressions on your face. Amen. That is a sweet spirit in here. Amen. And Father, we just want to thank you for the spirit that you have allowed to visit us on this morning. We thank you, God, because we realize that we don't have to call you loud, God. Even when we say it low, God, you hear us. And God, you know that when we're serious, God, oh God, and you allow your spirit to come and visit us, we thank you for that. We thank you for how you kept us, God. We thank you for how you have protected us, God. We thank you for just letting us know, God, that you're shining your light from heaven down on us, God. We thank you, God, for the breath that you have breathed into this place on this morning, God. Because, God, it's given us courage, God. It's given us strength, God, that we can carry on and we can go on a little longer, God. We thank you for that. We thank you because you have not forgotten us, God. And we know that and we realize that because we see your hands working, God. We see your hands working in this place, God. We see your hands working in this land, God. We see your hands working in the community, God. We see your hands working in your people, God. Hallelujah. So, God, we thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in this hour, God. We thank you for what you're doing in this season, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Realizing that the enemy, hallelujah, he, he, he's doing his thing, but you know what? God, you got all power. You're powerful than him. You own everything. You rule everything, God. So we thank you, Jesus, because we know you're in control. We know you're in control, God. But God, we know that you allow some things to happen sometimes and to come sometimes, God. But you're in control of everything. And so, God, we just give you praise and we thank you, God, because our trust is in you, God. We trust you with everything that we got, God. Oh, God, we trust you for our next step. We trust you for our next move. We, we, we trust you for, for our thinking, God. We thank you, God, for everything. God, and we just thank you, God, for this pastor, God. We thank you for our first lady, God. We thank you for just being so good to them, God. We thank you for the anointing that you have placed on their lives, God, that, that, that we can be followers, God. Hallelujah. And follow, God, his teaching. Oh, God, we thank you because he's teaching the word of God. And we thank you because when he teach, we grow, God. We hear your word, God, and we accept your word, God, and we grow from your word, and we thank you for that. Father, we just thank you, hallelujah, for all things. And I ask God that as I open up my mouth and begin to speak, God, and bring the word on this morning, God, that you would allow me to decrease, God, and you increase in me in the name of Jesus. That I would say what you would have me to say. I would speak what you would have me to speak in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, that your people would hear, God, that your anointing would follow my lips and your Holy Spirit would come out, God, and help me in the name of Jesus. Father, this is my prayer. I pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pastor T, um, I want to tell you this, and I don't know if Sheila um, ever mentioned this to you or not, and I wanted to pull it out of my um, phone to show you, and I just kept forgetting to do this. But we went... We went shopping one day, and well, we went to spend time with one of our the members here, celebrating a birthday. We just ate um, lunch with her, and as we were um, getting ready to come back, it started raining, and um, we we were just talking, not paying anything, no attention, you know, just just riding, talking, and talking, and all of a sudden, you know, I looked to the right, and I saw this big rainbow. It just went from one side all the way around to the other side. And then on top of that, it was another rainbow right going on top of it. And at the very place 
where God allowed me to turn right to see it, it was right at your spot, your, your, your wood spot. And I was like, Sheila, look at this. It's, this is Pastor T land right here, right? And we, we took a picture right there, right there at that spot. So, you know, it, I know that this, this is a covenant that God made with us that, that when we see the rainbow, it reminds us that the world will not be destroyed by water anymore. The Bible speaks of fire. But I thank God because that covenant, it, it just reminded me, and it was right there over Pastor T's spot to let me know that he's leading and directing you and, and allowing you to lead us in the things that he's telling you to do. God is with you. God is with you, and, and, and we got to we got to continue to 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 push Pastor T and and stick behind him and believe what he say and trust what he say because God is leading this man. I mean, he's leading him. God has his hands on Pastor T. This is a mighty man of God. Amen. And so, God, we thank you for Pastor T. And we ask that you would just increase in him even more, God. What you want to do, God, the things that he's um, believing you for in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we pray that you would give him no breakthroughs immediately in the name of Jesus. When he open up his mouth and speak, let it happen in the name of Jesus. We decree that thing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you. Thank the Lord for our pastor. Amen. See, there's a lot of times when people are following someone, they're really not sure um, who they're following. But if I were you, I wouldn't follow nobody that I'm not sure of. If I were you, I wouldn't put my trust in nobody that I'm not sure of. Amen. God has given us a pastor and he's, he's been a great example in this church, amen. And, and he's done some great things here. And, and I wanna tell you, my trust is in God now, but I trust the man of God that he's placed over us, amen. I trust him, amen. Hallelujah. And I just thank God for just showing us that right there in that spot. And I know somebody would say, well, Sister Kathy, it was two rainbows in the sky. They've been everywhere. But God just allowed us to look right at that moment because we was carrying on another conversation. But right in that spot, it was right there, and it was a perfect picture. And I was like, ooh, let me just get this little house that's right here, too, so to let Pastor T know that this is his spot, you know. We saw the, you know, equipment out there and everything. So I was like, this is, this is awesome. So I wanted to share that with the church, that if anybody had any doubt, don't doubt the man of God. Amen. Don't doubt the man of God because God is with him. Amen. 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 Today, um, I will be coming to you from the book of Acts. And... Um, I promise you I won't be long because I, re I really don't have a lot to say today. I'm just going to come from the book of Acts and I'll read these scriptures and I'm going to say what I got to say and I'm going to be done. So I can't promise you it's going to be preaching today. I can't promise you it's going to be teaching today, but I'm going to say what I got to say and I'm going to be done. Amen. 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 So Acts 27. And we're going to go to verse 9. And we'll read to verse 12. And then we'll wrap it up with verse 21 and 25. Amen. Amen. If you're ready, say amen. Amen. Now, when much time had been spent and selling was now dangerous, because the fast was already over, Paul advised them, saying, Men, I perceive that this voyage, this voyage will end with disaster and much loss, not only of the cargo and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion was more persuaded by the helmsman and the owner of the ship than by the things spoken by Paul. And because the harbor was not suitable to winter in, the majority advised to set sail from there also. 
If by any means they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete, opening to toward the southward and northward in the winter there. I mean, we're going to go to um, chap. We're going to stay in chapter 27 and read verse 21 and 25. And I'm just going to like catch you up on the story. Now, I know a lot of you already heard the story, but I'm just going to kind of fill in. Amen. 21. But after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Man, you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of lives among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God, to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sailed with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading of the word. My um, topic today is following good advice. Yes, following good advice. Amen. Um, in this particular story, Paul had gone to a lot of different places. And he was in Athens at, Athens at this particular time. And he was getting ready to go to Rome or wanted to go to Rome. But before he went there, he decided to go back to Jerusalem and teach a little bit there. And so when he was in Jerusalem, the Jews got mad at Paul. And they locked him up. And when his trial time came, Paul um, told them, he said, well, if you can just let me go to Rome, and, and, and I want to, to go there so that I can go before Caesar and, and, and plead my case. Because he didn't want to be tried in, in Jerusalem. Plus, he knew that he already had a mission to go to Rome. So he asked if he could just, you know, go to trial in Rome. So Paul ended up staying there, um, locked up in prison for two years. Then when his time had come to set sail to Rome, he got ready to go off to Rome. And this was um, during the winter time. And usually, like, during the wintertime, there are a lot of storms and whatnot going on. So Paul knew that this was a dangerous time to be sailing, but he wanted to go to Rome, and he knew that God would keep him because God had told him that he would get to Rome. So Paul decided to, to go on and get on the ship. And when he was on the ship, he tried to tell the centurion, the one that was over the prisoners, he tried to tell them, this is a bad time for us to sail right now. We need to just wait a little while. But do you think the centurion listened to a prisoner? You know, he looked at Paul probably like, man, you don't know what you're talking about. We're getting ready to go. And even if it's a bad time, I'm not taking any advice from you. But it's good to follow good advice. Amen. Amen. And so they decided to sail on anyway. And as they were sailing, at sea, they started out and everything was going good. You know, just sailing and everything was great. But a few days later, the storm began to roll. And I know y'all say, Kathy, this is Kathy, you talk about storm a lot. Because I do, I just thought about that. But you know what? This particular storm, see, we talk about a storm that may last for a day. You go to the mall, you know, Sheila and I, and a storm came up. You know, a few hours later, the storm was over. And a lot of times when we're in a storm, you know, a few hours later, you drive on through and that's it. But they were in a storm for days, days and days, 14. 
And they were going through, and, and this wind got boisterous, and the ship started rocking, and they were getting turned around and all this stuff. So they decided to throw some of the things that were in the boat off so that it would make it a little lighter and sail a little better. But that didn't help. So they, they continued on, continued on, and um, <clears throat> as they were going, Paul stood up and said, I told you, you should have listened to me. We should not have sailed at this time. But, you know, they went on anyway. And so as they were going, they were getting all afraid and nervous, and they were going without food, and they called it a fast in here. But for some time, Paul, he decided, okay, now, you know, God, you said you're going to keep us. So look like this thing is getting kind of rocky right here. So what we're going to do, I'm going to break this bread and I'm going to feed them because they need to be strong because if they got to swim or whatever, you know, they'll be strong enough to make it. So as they were sailing, they hit a rock or a reef or something in the water. And right before they did that, some of the prisoners wanted to try to jump off the boat anyway to try to save themselves. But Paul said, no, he told the centurion, no, don't let them do that. Because if they do that, they're going to they gonna drown. They're going to die. So they cut the little small boats away from the ship so that nobody could jump down in there and try to get away. And so as they kept moving, they hit this reef, and Paul could tell that the boat was getting ready to, to break up into pieces. So the centurions wanted to, to, the soldiers wanted to kill the prisoners because they didn't want them to get away. So then um, the centurion who was over them said, no, we can't kill these prisoners because Paul is a prisoner and he's with them. So if we kill them, we got to kill him too. And he's giving us this advice. So we can't kill any of them. So we, we just got to let them go. So the centurion decided, he said, all right, all on board if you can swim. Go on and jump off and swim, and swim to land. So they, they jumped off and they, they began to swim. And he said, all that can't swim, what I want you to do is just grab a hold to a piece of plank out here in the water and we're going to make it to shore. And then so they grabbed the piece of plank, the ones that couldn't swim, and they made it in. It was 276 aboard on that ship and they all made it to dry land. They made it to Marta. And they stayed there well, Paul stayed there because the people greeted them there, and Paul did some teaching there, and he, God allowed him to heal some sick there and do some good things there. And after he stayed there for a while, um, Paul decided, okay, now I got to get on to Rome. So a few months later, Paul went on to Rome, and, and he, he made it there, and everything was good there. Well, Paul was still a prisoner when he, he went to Rome. Remember, Paul, Paul stayed in jail for some time. But he was still a prisoner there, but he had a chance to go there and minister as well. Now, why are you telling me this? Well, I'm saying this because with what we're dealing with now, people need advice. And people really don't know who to look to because this person saying that, that person saying this, this person saying that, the person that you want to say something ain't saying nothing. And you don't know what to do. I mean, so what we got to do is take good, godly advice, good, godly advice. I mean, and, and I believe that God is going to keep us. I believe that he's going to protect us. He's going to take us through this. But we just got to listen to good advice and follow instructions. Now, and I'm thinking about this because it's youth day. And all we can hear on the news is things about the youth. The, the younger ones need to listen and they need to pay attention. And they need to, you know, we're hearing all this stuff and we got grown people doing the, the same thing. But a lot of young people who think that they're untouchable. We have to follow instruction. And instruction starts at home. Teaching starts at home. Like we try to, you know, tell the kids, well, what did your teacher say? Your teacher this and your teacher that. But you got to start training at home. Teaching at home. So if we can begin our teaching, you know, in the house of God. 
so that people can get godly, good advice, amen, and, and let God um, lead their minds and, and teach them and tell them what to, to tell us. I believe that we will make it through this. I've had um, someone to call me and say, can you just help me with, um, I'm just having an um, overhaul of toxic thoughts. Just, I, I just can't begin to think, you know, like I need to think. And then I took it to the scripture in the Bible that tells us to think on, on things that are true. Think on things that are pure. Think on things that are excellent. Think on things that, 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 that will, that's praiseworthy. And all of these things, that's what you got to think. When your mind starts thinking bad things, you got to think on God, but you've been good to me. But God, you done kept me this far. But God, I know you're going to protect me. God, I know you're going to keep me. You didn't need me, so I thank you for that, God. Hallelujah. Cover me in your blood. We just got to begin to... Think on those things because the devil will. He'll have you thinking so many things. But take yourself to the scripture and read those scriptures and repeat those scriptures and say, you know what? Think on the things that's true. What is true? True, the word of God. If you think on the truth, the truth will set you free. Think on God's word. Read it, amen. It's true. Everything will fail but the word of God. Amen. Everything will fail but the word of God. But we have to follow instructions. And listen, we have, we have people that will get around you or in the environment, and they know that they've been around other people, or they know they've been in contact with people that may be carrying the virus or whatnot. When you know and you are aware of this, don't try to come around nobody. Sit down, go home, lock up, isolate, do what you follow instructions. So we can get a hold of this thing. Now we 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 have to do this. And so that's why I say that, you know, just 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 follow godly advice. Because you can't live haphazardly in this day and time. You you just can't. You can't do your own thing, what you want to do. Now you can but it's gonna be some consequences. And when you get around somebody else, don't get offended when you see somebody else wearing a mask. Don't you get offended. Put your mask on. Don't be sitting there like I ain't got nothing or whatever. We got to follow good advice. Amen. And and you know we as God's people, and I thank God for just allowing us to be able to serve this community, Pastor T. But when we serve the community, we get out there and we put our gears on. Just like the Bible said, the armor of God. You know, put on the whole armor, amen. So when we serve in this community, we got armor that we got to put on. Have on gloves and masks and all of this stuff serving. That's how you're going to be covered and protected. And then we plead the blood of Jesus over ourselves, the blood of Jesus, over ourselves, the blood of Jesus, amen, over ourselves, that we be covered, amen, hallelujah, and I, I'm saying this to young people today, because I, I want to see life get back to some kind of normalcy, I want to see students back in school, sitting in front of the school teacher, learning. I want to see PE happening in school. I want to see students graduating, amen, and being able to walk across the stage, amen. But if we keep living haphazardly, people, it's hard to get back. When we got a lot of hard-headed people, it's hard to get back. So we got to, and, and trust me, if you believe and, and, and you, you're, you're staying away and you're, you know, you're in your home and whatnot, you, you can do what you want to do in your home. Amen? Because you're around that unit. Amen? But when we're out, protect yourself. You need to protect yourself. Amen? I want to see games and activities going on again. I, I don't know how far we are from this, but I want to see it again. Amen. 
You know, and God can do this. Only God. I mean, I, I, I put my trust in God now. People saying that it may never happen again, but my trust is in God. Amen. Hallelujah, because I want to see children being able to be active, amen, because that leads to other things. When they're not active, then they begin to get obese, sitting in the house, eating all the time, and, you know, and get, playing on video games and all of this stuff, and half doing their homework because they got to do it virtually. I want to see them sitting back in front of the teacher, amen. Hallelujah. I want to see... Um, teachers getting back together again collaborating and trying to figure out how we can teach and educate these children amen recreation sports and all of these things where you know kids may not necessarily be in a, a middle school sport on a team but there were a lot of recreation things going on that kids were able to do amen and grow into the sport I want to see these things happening again amen um, it's, it's affected so many different things in this world, amen. But I want to be able to just get back together again. Sit down and have lunch and not have to worry about being six feet um, away from somebody else. Amen. So let's follow these um, instructions that we've been given. I want to see jobs being opened back up again. I want to see when we don't have to wear these masks anymore. Hallelujah. I want to see that, but right now, let's do that. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to be able to take trips and vacations and have fun with my family and all of this stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. And not worry about if somebody got in the water and they were contaminated and all of this stuff. I, I, I want some normality. But right now, we got to follow instructions. And, and it almost seems simple if they say it's a 14-day thing, if we all can just do something for at least 21 days or a month straight. Hallelujah. And, and I want to see the, the economy get back up. Amen. People walking around with money in their pocket and dangling at a change and all of this stuff. Amen. That's what I want to see. I want to see when, when you don't feel people. Amen. Like you jumping back. Like, I don't know. Uh-uh. Stay back. No, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to do that stuff. I'm, I'm ready to, to get back. Hallelujah. 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 I don't want to have to fear. I want to be able to come up in here and worship God. And you know how the pastor, he get to running down through there. And I, I get to moving and people all up here sitting uh, in the pulpit and stuff. I want to see that. But we got to follow good advice. Amen. We want to be able to fellowship and, and, and feel free in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, I, you know, like I say, I didn't have much to say, but I, since it was youth day, I just want to, like, just talk to not only the youth, because I want y'all to get it. Not only youth, but I just want to talk to some people. And, and, I, and I will say this, because I don't want anybody to think that I'm getting on you, because I be... I'm trying my best. I try to talk to my daughter. You need to, you know, just stay at home. And I know you're getting tired of sitting in the house. Amen. And I try to, you know, okay, but I want her to stay in the house. Amen. Because then, for some reason, young people, they just think don't nothing attached to them. So they go out and do what they got to do, and they come back smiling all in your face. Hey, mama. Hey, daddy. And they ready to hug you and all this stuff. And we be like, I, I don't know where you well, I don't know where you been. Just get back for a minute. Go in your room for three days. Just go in there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. We got to trust that God will keep his promise to us. He's going to take care of us. Because we have some assignments to complete. Because I don't believe that it's over yet. There's been some stuff prophesied on my life that I got to do. So I got some assignments that I got to complete. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we got we got jobs to do. We we got some some more degrees to, to, to get awarded. Amen. Hallelujah. We have a duty that we gotta fulfill in this land. Somebody got some dreams. Somebody been saying, I've been dreaming and I want to see this thing come to pass. God told me that I was gonna.
gonna be a prophetess and I gotta see this thing come to pass. I it can't stop right here. I gotta keep moving. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. God, we need a breakthrough. We need your miracle in the name of Jesus. Some people got some homes that they gotta pay off because they ready to buy another house. We gotta see some stuff come to pass, Jesus. Hallelujah. Some people feel like I ain't walking in my calling yet. But God, I don't feel like it's time to stop right now because I got to get over into my destiny. I got to get over into my place. And I know, God, that I got some more time here. So if you could just help me, Lord Jesus, make it to my destiny. Hallelujah. And that's what we got to do. Just believe that God's going to get us there. Trust that he's going to get us there. I was just looking at how hard Sheila and Sherry be working out there in that community doing this um, 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 food drive and Sister Madden and everybody sweating and doing all of this stuff. We got a destiny. God has put a vision in our mind and we got to see this vision come to pass. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. So God, we pray that you would get us over into our destiny. Get us where we need to be. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, it ain't over yet, Sherry. God got some great things for you. It ain't over yet, Rick. God got some good things for you. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray, God, that these things that you have assigned to us, that we will live to see it come to pass. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It ain't over yet. Hallelujah. God, God has everything in control now, and I just, I, I just, I, I just refuse to believe that it's over. It ain't over, and they talking about apocalyptic and all of this stuff, and I, I, I just refuse to believe that right now. Hallelujah, because God has promised me some things. Hallelujah, God has promised you some things, and you're gonna get over into it. So I, I encourage you to keep on working. Keep on completing your task. Keep on pulling those goals together. Keep on putting those dreams together. Keep on writing on your paper. Stick with your vision in the name of Jesus because it shall come to pass. It will come to pass. It shall not perish, but it will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. Father, I believe that. I believe that it ain't over, Quita. What God has told you, you, you got to stand on it in the name of Jesus. Stand on what he said. And just walk it out in the name of Jesus. Walk that thing out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to see these little prophets and, and whatnot that we're raising up in the church, Layla and, 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 and all of these young people, I, I want to see these people grow up and, and, and be able to exercise your gift in the church so me and Sister Tony can just sit down and look at what you're doing. Come up here on this praise team and begin to lead praise and worship and we can sit down and turn it over to you. It ain't over yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has a plan for your life. And you got to continue to seek it out. You got to get tired and angry with what you're doing because you're not making it where you're supposed to be and begin to let that push you forward. Push you into your destiny. Push you where you need to be. Amen. Because you know everybody needs some planning time. So now it's the time to be planning and working things out. Amen. I'm sticking with that. I, I'm, I find myself always getting back to that, Pastor T, but I just feel God is just leading me to say that. I feel that the Holy Spirit is just encouraging me to tell you, Tan, it ain't over. What God has for you, it is for you. Nobody can talk you out of it. Nobody can discourage you from it. What God has for you, it is for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, I pray.
pray right now healing over this this entire church God I pray your healing over this church in the name of Jesus we plead the blood of Jesus right now that you would cover everybody in this church in the name of Jesus God wherever we walk whatever our feet tread upon it will be blessed in the name of Jesus you would direct us you would guide us you would keep us in the name of Jesus this is my prayer God and I pray because I, 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 I feel the Holy Ghost. I, I feel the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Encouraging me to speak over your life. I, I encourage you to accept it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. God is keeping you, brother Ghost. Because God, he's keeping you. God is keeping you. Hallelujah. God is keeping you, Pop. He's keeping you for a reason. God is keeping you because you've been faithful to this church. You've been an example for this church. When other people wanted to quit, you kept going. He's keeping you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And kind of all, you, you just tell God to bring it on. Bring it on, God. See, you, you just retired, but it ain't over. Tell God to bring it on. Now, what you want me to do now, God? Bring it on. I'm ready for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You keep on walking, Pastor William. Keep on moving. It ain't over. It ain't over yet. It ain't over for you, Stella. Keep on moving in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over your life. I plead the blood of Jesus that he will protect you and keep you as you go. I pray that whatever God has for you, that you will receive it and get it in the name of Jesus. Cover them in your blood, God. The plan that you have for their life, the vision that you got for them, help them to walk it out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for your Holy Spirit, God, and I thank you for moving in this place in the name of Jesus. And Father God, when you say, stop, God, I, I stop. But Father God, I just want to follow your instructions. I want to follow good advice. So everything that I said and everything that I spoke today, I ask that you would seal it in the name of Jesus. Seal it in the name of Jesus. Let it come to pass in the name of Jesus. Father God, and we're just looking, hallelujah, for good report, God. Good report, God. Saying that you're turning things around. Saying that you're working things out. Saying that you're fixing things. I'm beginning, beginning to see clearer now. I'm beginning to think clearer now. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you because I know that you're going to do it because you keep your promise. So I believe that. And Lord, this is my prayer and my word that I've spoken over this church. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, I invite you to know him today. If you're here today and you feel like you've been playing church, but you really want to know him because, see, now is not a time for playing. It's time to put the games away and be for real with Jesus. Young people, God want to use you. 
And you can't look at the world and what they're doing because it seems like they're having so much fun. And you exempt your time to be used by God and put it off for a later time. Don't miss your time with God. Don't miss your exit with God. See, I know you, you see a lot of other young people out there also doing and serving God. He wants to use you the same way. Give God your time. Give him some of your time. Let him use you. Hallelujah. While you're young. You can run this race faster. You know, older ones, we've been out here for a while, may not be able to run as fast, but we can tell you. We can teach you and train you. Take the good advice. Take the good advice. Don't say, that old man don't know what he's talking about. That lady don't know what she's talking about. We know. And what I can tell you is that if you don't serve him with all your heart now, when you get older, you're going to say, I wish someone had taught me, or I wish someone had trained me. I, I like what I see this young lady over here doing. The opportunity is yours. God can use you the same way you open up your mouth and you can speak and prophesy to the nation. Hallelujah. So if there's anybody out there that want to accept him, the doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. Hallelujah. Well, sin is the thing that separated us from God. God doesn't like sin. He doesn't deal with sin. He doesn't deal in sin. It disconnected us from him completely when man fell and sinned in the Garden of Eden. From that point, it separated us from God. But he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. Jesus said, I'll go for them. I'll sacrifice my life. I'll sacrifice my blood for them. I'll pay the price for them. And all you have to do is accept him as your Lord and Savior. And when you go and accept him as your Lord and Savior, from that point on, if you make mistakes, if you fall, all you got to do is say, God, I fell. Pick me up. Forgive me for my sins. Wash me clean, God. I don't want to do that no more. I want to turn away from that. And he'll do it. He'll do it for you. And I want to say this one last thing. is no other way you can make it into the kingdom of God in heaven. You must come in at the door. And Jesus Christ is the way. He's a door. When you come in through Jesus, accepting him as your Lord and Savior, you have gained eternal life. You have gained eternal life. Things will pass away. People going to die. People going to get sick and what not. But when you gain eternal life with Jesus Christ, you don't even have to worry about that anymore. You don't have to worry about that. Because you will live with Jesus forever. It's your choice. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor T. Amen. Did Sister Kathy preach that? Amen. Oh, my God. I want to thank you all, first of all, for just letting Pastor T have a, a week off. I just got redeemed. People don't realize that the pastor has to get preached back into. Sister, Sister Kathy done filled me up. 
Oh my God. I'm going to say something that I said on Wednesday. And then I'm going to tell you a little story. I don't know how much of God you have. But you have all of God that you want. I'm going to say that one more time and then I'm going to explain something to you. I don't know how much of God you have. But you have all of God you want. The Bible says it this way. He says, I am a rewarder. Over Hebrews, of, of he who diligently seek me. That anointing? This anointing? You get in the highways and the byways. I'm just going to tell you how it is. I watched Sister Kathy yesterday running from one car to the other praying for folk when nobody can't see her. That's where the anointing come from. If you think the anointing come up here, you wrong. You can get up here, you can, you can get your license, you can get your credentials, you can come up here, you ain't gonna have no power. The anointing is behind the scenes. When nobody can't see you. When you when you hanging in somebody's car and they saying, pray for my son to come home. And ain't nobody but you and them praying right there, side the road, out in the hot sun. That's where that anointing come from. I don't know how much of God. See, we said and we said, I want to be like sister. I want to be able to do that like Sister Kathy. I want to be able to prophesy. I want to be able to preach like Pastor T. It don't come right here. It don't come here. It comes out there. That's where it comes from. You can go get all the degrees you want. That ain't going to do it. I'm sorry. It don't happen like that. But when you see Sister Kathy, when I saw her yesterday, praying for folk. Yes, yes. You come every week, there's going to be a line waiting on Pastor T. And Sister Kathy tell you the same thing. No, I'm waiting on Pastor T. And I get from one. No, I'm, I'm waiting. Be two calls. Bro, Robert. And they said, No, I'm waiting on Pastor T. Be four calls waiting. I'm waiting on Pastor T. Because I'm personal with them. What, 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 what's going on in your life? What can I, I what, what can I believe God with you for right now? Right now, what can I believe God with you for? That's where that anointing come from. I know some of y'all saying, "Wow, I ain't never seen since you. You ain't seen nothing." And if you want that kind of power, you gonna have to get it in the trenches. It don't come right here. I never been so proud in all my life. Like I'm proud of her now and when she did her first public sermon. Cause she allowed, she put that paper down, closed that book, allowed the Holy Ghost to take care of. What you say? Put that paper down, closed that book, and the Holy Ghost took off. And I was there praying, I said, hold on a little while longer, Holy Ghost. And she moved over here, hold on a little while longer. And then when I saw her, when I saw Miss Stella walk in that door, the Lord spoke and said encouragement. And then when I saw her, and she walked over to Stella, I said, I said, help her Holy Ghost. And when she started encouraging Miss Stella, I said, would you look at God? Oh my God! And come in the trenches, y'all. That's all I can tell you. It don't, it don't, you can't read a book and get that. You can't get that from nobody but God. Amen. That was just, I just, I've been, oh my God. See, God told me to make disciples. And nothing refreshes a pastor. The way when he can sit over in a seat like that. And see one that's come behind him and he has discipled, he has trained, 
that he has taught and she exercised and execute the word with authority that way. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. All I can say is thank you, Lord. Then she got up here and preached the gospel. And opened the invitation. I believe somebody's heart has been changed. The Bible says it this way. He says, Paul plant and Apollos water, but I add the increase. I don't know if she was planting or watering right now, but I can tell you what, right now in a few days, you're going to see some increase by what she just did. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Thank you, Sister Kathy. Was, and, and, and thank you for these teachers encouraging these young folk. If you didn't hear nothing else, godly advice. That's the key. All of us, you all. God has the answer. He's the only one that has the answer. He's going to let us know he's the only one with the answer. We're going to get to the end of the end of the end. And then when we turn to him, he's going to say, I was waiting for you to do that. God has the answer. He is the only one with the answer. Amen. I'm encouraged and I hope you are. I'm going to turn this back over to whoever presiding or whoever's going to close us out. Because this is my Sunday off and I'm going to enjoy it. Hallelujah. Thank those of you who are yet working uh, with the uh, community grocery giveaway and all the things that the community is doing. Um, it is growing. It is, it is, I've, I've never seen the likes of so many encouragement, uh, encouraging volunteers that um, are, are week after week after week. We invited some visitors to, to, to come they were just absolutely amazed at what God was doing. And it continues week after week. It's a community effort. And, and we would that you would continue to pray. I thank God for the, 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 the springs and all that you all are doing. Um, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be making some announcements, some important announcements about, about what God is doing in that ministry. And when I tell you it's huge, Mary is huge. It, where God is taking that ministry right now, none of us three months ago, uh, a little over three months ago, had any idea what God was doing. But Sister Kathy, we were. We were led by the Holy Ghost and led by God, taking one step at a time, not really being able to see the end of the thing. And I, I want to encourage you all right now. God don't show us always the, the end, the result. He says, I will give you your daily bread. He says, I'll be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. You see just enough to keep going. He told Abraham, I'll let you know when you get there. Somebody on somebody. Sometimes we don't see all of it, but we see enough to keep going. So keep going. And uh, now, uh, Pastor Williams, as I get to the point where I'm kind of vaguely seeing what he was doing, I'm totally amazed. We're not at the point where we can share everything now, but just give us a couple of weeks. We're going to share some stuff with you that's going to absolutely, positively blow your mind. God is in charge and he's doing a, a good work. We're going to follow him. We're going to walk by faith and not by sight. Not always seeing all of it at that time, Maddie, but trusting him that he will see us through. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for your obedience, your social distancing. Y'all have done this so well. People still asking me, say, Pastor T, how are things going? How are these? I say, listen, people are obedient and they're doing what, what we have to do to keep having service. And, and, and God, you know, I thank, I thank God for what Jesus says. Lord, I have done what you commanded me to do. And then he says, I didn't lose not one. That's the Holy Ghost. Ain't God all right? God is all right. As I understand it, um, um, Sister Kathy, many many of you have already heard about um, the Cooper family and the, the death in that family. Um, and as I understand, they have asked that we would assist them. And y'all know that we never close our doors to any hurting family, no matter what's going on, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation, period. We don't close our doors to any hurting family. 
And as I understand, um, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I've heard that that uh, service will be this Thursday. And that's about all I know I'll be able to make uh, others aware uh, after Wednesday. I'm sure they will, the family will call. Tony has been in contact with them. I've only talked with them one time, and I don't know much other than Thursday is where they are leaning, and they have asked us to host that um, situation. And y'all know we don't close our doors to any hurting family. So, Sister Brown, I want you to prepare your heart, and those who would, we we are still soliciting some help. Those of you who would like to help Sister Brown, because after something like that, we do have to uh, um, have a massive cleaning in in, in the sanctuary. Um, and, and, and get everything prepared to keep us healthy, wealthy, and wise. So we do solicit some help in those areas. That being said, just uh, keep, keep lifting us up in prayer that we walk by faith and not by sight. Those of you who know that family, call them and encourage them. It was, um, it was unexpected and something that they are, they're dealing with it well, but it, it, it's tough. So those of you who know that family and would, please give them a call. And, you know, we are connected with them very much so. And Miss Lynn has been an a inspiration and just a sweetheart and that little girl of hers. And we thank God for all of the family. So y'all, please, if you would, consider that family in prayer. Those who will come now, thank you for this day. I have enjoyed it. I, my soul has been lifted up. Thank you. We ask each and every one to stand. All hearts and minds are on one accord. Amen. Most holy and all wise. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you. Lord God, we thank you for this word that has been sown into our lives. Lord God, we thank you for this woman of God. Lord God, we're praying that you restore her for all the time and all the that she has spent with you, Lord God, and what she has poured out unto us today, Lord God. We thank you and we pray that you refill her, Lord God. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for our first lady. We thank you for each and every household that is represented here today. So, Lord God, as we leave here, Lord God, to our different destinations, Lord God, we're praying for traveling grace and highway favor, Lord God, until we shall meet again. And, Lord God, those who are hearing your word and hearing your voice and when you tell them to come back into the house of worship again, Lord God, we're praying that they'll be obedient and hear what you are saying. Lord God, unto you, the one who is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before the throne of grace, dominion, majesty, and power all belong to you, for you are the only one and true wise God, and may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, may it rest, rule, and abide in the hearts and minds of these here, your people, from henceforth, now, and forevermore, and we all together say, Thank you for your safe distance.